Hello guys and welcome back to Game Development Tutorials. Today we are continuing on our Space Shooter game. So, I just want to clarify this right now. Uh, how to open a project. Uh, I have not been getting any comments on how to do this, but just in case. Uh, you will just uh, double click on this Uni Hub icon. Then it will open. Then you, and then all you have to do is just click on the project that you want to open. Then Unity takes some time to open the project. Uh, that's just because Unity is not lightweight, comes with a lot of features and stuff that it has to actually import into the project. Uh, but it really just depends on how good your computer is. Okay. So, last time. We added the enemy, so if we just press play, uh, he just shoots at us, um, and yeah, it's pretty cool right now, but to make it better, we should probably spawn enemies instead of just having this one guy sit and just move forward and that's it, game over. Okay, so, uh, making an enemy spawner is kind of simple, because... It's just basically taking the enemy shoot script, except it's not spawning the bullets, it's spawning um, the enemies, so it's pretty simple. Uh, yeah, so it's literally just this script. So we can just, so we can just double click on the enemy shoot script to open it up, then highlight all of this by dragging your mouse over it. And just say Control C on Windows, Command C on Mac. Go back into Unity. Let's click on on the script folder in the project panel. Right click, create C sharp script. And then I'll just call it Enemy Spawner. Then press Enter to actually make the script. Okay, it will load for a second, or compiling, as it's called. Now, we want to apply this script to a game object. So, um, it does not have to be a physical game object, so it does not have to be the player. So, because we do not want it to be a physical game object, because that would just be weird. Believe me, I I've tried that before. So, what we can do, we can right-click in the hierarchy, and just hit create empty and it's an object that is in the scene but it's not uh... it has no form so that's good for us so then so we can actually see it better or quicker we can just drag this all the way to the top so it shows this blue line and then just let go okay and make sure that it is not parented to the camera so make sure that it's not like this Make sure that it's like this. Then, <clears throat> like we will do for all game objects, we can just right click on, make sure to select the, uh, the game object, right click on the word transform, and just do, and just hit reset. Okay, um, we will move it up maybe to about Z32. Okay, that was good, so that means that the enemies should spawn off screen, also make it 35. Uh, so, this, so the enemies should spawn at a random x value, so it should, so the x is this axis, so it should, so the enemies should spawn from random here, 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 or anything that it chooses, and it will always be on this z axis. So it will always spawn in this Z coordinate. Sorry if that did not make sense, but it will get more clear. Okay, so we can rename this object. Uh, we can just rename it to enemy whoop, enemy spawner. Then press enter to actually apply the name. Then we just go to add component and let's we'll just add the enemy spawner okay we can hit save by can by pressing control s on windows 
or Command S on Mac. I will say that a lot just to make sure that you guys that just to make sure that it is engraved in your brain on how to save a project. That is the most important part of game de development. Okay, so now we can open the enemy spawner script by double cl clicking on it, and it will open Visual Studio. So then, since we have copied the enemy shoot script code, we copied all of this. We can just highlight this. Uh, we can just highlight the void update in the void start method, and just press Control V. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we will want to make some changes here, like the variable names. So we do not need a fire point, so you can just delete that. And the game up and the game object that we want to spawn will not be called bolt prefab. Um, to, it will just be called enemy prefab. Okay, then we do not want shoot speed. We want um maybe spawn time uh sorry about that okay um let me show you how to rename all of these quickly okay so to rename all of these quickly you just highlight on the variable th that you want to rename you will get some errors, but just you know, we are gonna change that. Um, you will. Um, uh, in order to rename a variable for all cases that it's used, you'll just select the variable by just clicking on the variable name, and pressing Control R R or Command R R if you're on a Mac. So Control R R. Then you will see this screen pop up. We just want to rename it to enemy spawn rate now we can hit apply to actually apply these changes and now you'll see that every time um, it says um, the shoot rate or bullet rate or something um, it has changed the name to enemy spawn rate okay so let's do the same thing with the shoot speed time so select it press ctrl r r and just say current enemy oop, spawn rate. Then hit apply. Make sure to hit apply. <laughs> then we can just save this. Control S or Command S if on Mac. Now we just want to rename this method name instead of shoot. Again, we can select the name shoot. Control R R or Command R R. Just rename it to spawn enemy and hit apply. Okay, game object. So let's just start from from the beginning. Uh, void spawn enemy. It'll do a game object. Um, we actually do not want it to delete, so we can just say so we can just delete that. Delete that. Delete that. And now we can say instantiate. Enemy prefab at transform dot position. Then for the rotation, so for the rotation, we will use quaternion dot identity. So what a quaternion is, would we no game developer understands it. They just is basically just hidden this. You just retry it over and over. Plus, hey. I don't really like math that much. So I'm just gonna write quaternion dot I identity and I and I have an idea on what it means, just not the quaternion part. So quaternions are basically rotation, I guess. And then so quaternion, then you have to define the type of rotation. I identity, so quaternion dot identity means zero rotation. So it will just go straight forward. Okay, sorry if that did not make sense. I'm, I'm trying my best. Um, qu quaternions are definitely hard. You will get used to writing quaternion dot then the rotation, but it's definitely hard. Okay, and that is actually it for the enemy spawner code. 
So we can just go back into unique to the space shooter game. Then we will have to define some variables. Okay, so first of all, we need to make the enemy spaceship a prefab. So we can do that by just dragging the enemy spaceship game object into our prefab folder. Then just letting go and it will turn it into a prefab. Once again, all prefabs in, in the scene will have this blue tint. So we can just delete that one from the scene because we do not need it. And we can delete it from the scene because we still have it, it's just not in the scene. Okay, good. Now we can select the enemy spawn. Let's see what time we are at. 10 minutes. Okay, not bad. We are almost done. Then for the enemy prefab, we can go into our prefabs folder by clicking on this arrow next to it and just dragging the enemy spaceship into that. Spawn rate, you can just set that to whatever you want. For me, I'm just going to set it to 3. Save the scene or the whole project. By hitting Control S or Command S if on your if you are on Mac. Now, if we just press play, uh, the enemies will not spawn randomly on the X yet, but they will come down. But they're going backwards. <laughs> yep, see, they are going backwards. So, uh, so, it's a pretty easy fix. We can just select the enemy spawner and just rotate it on the Z by 100, on the Y by 100, and whoop, 80 degrees. And that should fix our problem. Okay, so now if we press play, the enemy should actually go towards us. Still going backwards. Okay. So let's just go back into the enemy spawn script. And instead of quaternion.identity, we can just say transform.rotation. So they will spawn at the, en the en enemy spawner rotation. So it will spawn at 180 degrees. So it will go to the player. This should work. <laughs> okay. There we go. And they shoot. Yay. Oh. Okay. Uh, also, maybe set this to 5. This spawn rate to 5. And remember, um, whatever changes you apply in game will not save in the actual scene, so we have to put this as 5 once again. Okay, so now the last part of this video will be just getting the enemy spaceships to spawn on a random X. So we can very easily do that by going into the enemy spawner script by double clicking it. Then we will need to define some variables. You will need a public float min x, another float, public float, max x. Okay, so now we can go back down, and then we will need to edit this. So what we can say, on uh, transform.position.x, we do not want that. We want to define a vector 3, so we'll say new vector 3. So, what takes in the vector 3, we need the x position for it to spawn at. So we will do random.range, so it will just pick a random number between the values that we give it. So the min value will be min x, and the max value will be max x. Then y is getting an error because we also have to find, uh, define the y and z. So we can just say uh, for the y, 0f, then for the z, 
uh, transform dot position dot z. Okay, this should be good. So uh, I'm just gonna let you copy this down. So you, you can just pause it right here and just copy this down. Um, but what this is basically saying. Um, so it's telling the enemies to spawn at this game object's position, but plus um, a random value between this value and this value. Then it's spawning at 0f, so it's ground level, and at this z position, so it still spawns all the way back. Okay. So now we can go back into Unity, wait for it to compile, and we will see these two variables pop up. So, let's just see, so we have to define these, so um, you do not have to drag this spaceship back in, but I'm just going to get the, uh, the values for you so you, to, so you can just copy them down. Further. Okay, that looks good. So, the minimum x value is negative 37, and the max is 37. Okay. Now, this should spawn the enemy spaceships at a random x. There we go, see how it pops up over there. And then, there we go, we have a random value. There we go. Yay! And that is it for this video. We have successfully made an enemy spawner. Next video will be part two of the enemy spawner because we want waves. Um, so yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, and see you in, in, in the next part. Bye, guys.